For this topic, we will talk about spermatozoa in the female tract, specifically the transport, capacitation, and fertilization. So, in terms of this uh, discussion, there are a series of stages or phases. So, in this topic, we will focus on ovulation and fertilization. So, first, we will talk about the major sequence of events following the position of spermatozoa in female tract. We have five major sequence, namely immediate transport, cervix, uterus, oviduct, and the fertilization. To begin with, we have the immediate transport. So, under this, we have the retrograde loss. So, after insemination, spermatozoa are lost from the female reproductive tract by retrograde transport. And after that, the spermatozoa are phagocytized by the leukocytes within the female tract and the entrance into cervix or uterus also happens. Next, we have the cervix. These are called the privileged pathways. This is also where the removal of non mortal sperm and the removal of some abnormalities happens. Next, we have the uterus. The uterus is where the capacitation is initiated. So what is capacitation? Capacitation is important because they must undergo capacitation before they can fertilize the oocyte. So next, we have the oviduct. This is where the capacitation is completed and there is also hyperactive motility of the spermatozoa. And lastly, we have the fertilization. There is a an acrosome, acrosome reaction. So what is acrosome reaction? Acrosome reaction is when a sperm encounter the egg and they undergo the acrosome reaction and the fertilization takes place. So the spermatozoon pen penetrates oocyte and it is also where male and female pronuclei is formed. Next, we have the male ejaculation of semen. So this differ also in different species of animals. For example, we have for cow, sheep, rabbit, primates, dogs, and cats, the male ejaculates the semen into the cranial vagina. So for us, pigs, horses, and camelids, their semen is either deposited directly into the cervix, like those of the pig, or is required through the cervical lumen during population, as for the horses. So for the dog, the pig, and the horse, most of the ejaculate gains entrance into the uterine lumen. So the stallion ejaculates in a series of jets in which a sperm rich fraction is ejaculated first in a series of three to four high pressure squirts so for the dog um, the dog semen is ejaculated in three fractions the first is called the pre-sperm fraction that is thought to originate from the prostate and also we have a second one a sperm rich fraction which is opalescent in color and contains between 300 million and 2 billion sperm. The final one is ejaculated insurges of prostatic fluid that squirt into the vagina of the bitch during second stage coitus. Because of the tie, most of this fraction is forced cranially into the uterus and is believed to push the sperm-rich fraction ahead of it into the uterus. So next, we will talk about the degree to which the spermatozoa is lost from the female tract. So this depends upon the physical nature of the ejaculate and the site of the seminal deposition. So some species have seminal plasma that contain coagulation protein that forms a conspicuous vaginal plug. So these species are the female rodents and mice. They have vaginal plug that is externally visible during copulation. So this presence of vaginal plug is used to determine if mating has occurred. So note that domestic animals do not have vaginal plug. 
for continuation, spermatozoa are lost from the female tract by two ways. These two ways are phagocytosis by neutrophils and the retrograde transport. So when we talk about phagocytosis by neutrophils, this is when a female reproductive tract is under the influence of estradiol. The neutrophils sequester in the mucosa of the tract, especially in the vagina and uterus. So from an immunologic perspective, spermatozoa are foreign to the female. So as a result of that, the neutrophils actively phagocytize spermatozoa. So they do not care whether the um, sperm is alive or dead. And for a fact that a single neutrophil is capable of engulfing several motile spermatozoa, so they could not assess whether the sperm is alive or it's dead. Next is we have through retrograde transport. So among the least understood phenomena in reproductive physiology are factors that regulate loss of spermatozoa from the female tract. So transport of spermatozoa following copulation can be divided into two phases. These are the rapid transport phase and the sustained transport phase. So first let's talk about the rapid phase of transport. This was once considered to be important because it delivered spermatozoa to the site of fertilization very shortly after copulation where they postured themselves for the arrival of oocytes. However, further research has shown that spermatozoa arriving in the oviducts within minutes after copulation were not viable. So the functional importance of this phase is not obvious. It simply represents a burst of transport activity brought about contraction of the muscularis of the female tract in conjunction with copulation. The next phase is we have the sustained transport phase. This is the more important component of transport in which spermatozoa are transported to the oviducts in a trickle-like effect. So the sustained sperm transport phase delivers spermatozoa to the ampulla of the oviduct in a more uniform manner over a sustained period of time. So next, um, we'll talk about how spermatozoa traveled through privileged pathways in the cow. So, the cervix is a major barrier to spermatozoa transport and a reservoir for spermatozoa. So, following the natural service in the cow and you, and to some degree the mare, spermatozoa must negotiate the highly convoluted system of grooves within the cervix. So, during estrus, the cervix produces mucose. So there are two types of mucose produced in the cervix during estrus. This is the sialomucin, a mucus of low viscosity, and the sulfomucin. So sialomucin is produced by cells in the basal areas of the cervical crypts, while sulfomucin is produced in the apical portions of the cervical epithelium covering the tips of the cervical folds. So the production of two types of mucose creates two distinct environments within the cervix. So when a spermatozoa encounter the viscous sulfomucin, they are washed out of the tract. While on the other hand, those that encounter the low viscosity sialomucin, um, the spermatozoa swim into it. So thus, the low viscosity environment of the deeper cervical crypts creates privileged pathways through which spermatozoa can move. So the ability of spermatozoa to traverse these privileged pathways is believed to depend on their ability to swim through the basal channels or the crypts of the cervix. So in this context, the cervix may be a filter that eliminates the non-motile spermatozoa.